Hello and thank you for joining me for this short tutorial. Many visitors have asked how I create the voices for the videos on this channel. The following is a short lesson on how I create the many voiceover tracks used in my videos. Text to speech is a great tool. In order for it to be used effectively, however, it requires the user to be mindful of what they wish to achieve. This tutorial uses text to speech on Mac OS X Catalina. Let's begin. Firstly, head on up to System Preferences. Click the Apple and then click System Preferences. You can also come over to your dock, mine's on the left side, and click System Preferences from there. The System Preferences window opens, come over and click Accessibility. Within this window, come on over to the left hand side and click on Speech. From here, you can see the system voice and the speaking rate. But for system voice, we can come in and you can see at the moment mine is set to the Siri female for Ireland. You can click play. Hello, my name is Siri. And get a demo of her. Now, of course, what you can also do is click the drop down and see the other voices that are available to you. My system has quite a few voices because obviously I've been playing with a few of them. Uh, otherwise, if you want to actually see all the voices that are available, come on down to the very bottom of the list and click on Customize. When you click on Customize, you're given a list of languages alphabetically with your home language first. Um, so Australia is, of course, up there at the top. But as we roll through, we can see lots of different languages, lots of different options for clicking languages. You can see there's quite a few. Now, speaking of quite a few, if you wanted to add one. So what if I wanted to add one? Well, I can by clicking on the box for one. So then it also gives me a, sh a little box here to say that I can upgrade to an enhanced quality, which means one is a better quality voice. Something to remember when you're actually doing voiceovers with your text-to-speech systems, you should try and use the highest quality voice where possible. However, if you want to use a low quality voice, that's no problem there, because you can always use a bit of bit crusher to make it sound especially 8-bit. Now, as we scroll through, once you've chosen the voice you like, and you're happy with that particular voice, come on back through, there we go, I've got a Siri female Japanese and a male as well, and I can click those and then go OK. Those voices will download in the background. While I'm waiting though, I can then still come through and look at the current voices that I have available and you can see I've got quite a few. I may decide that I want to use a different voice for this particular voiceover depending on where I am in the world. In this particular option, I'm going to stick with what I have at the moment, but I might just go with Daniel or Oliver, although I keep hearing from you that one of those voices is used in an insurance company commercial, which always makes me laugh. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll come over and we'll go to Tessa from South Africa. Hello, my name is Tessa. I'm a South African English voice. I've pulled her down a little bit and uh, that's probably good for most sort of emergency warning videos. You want to make sure that she's a little bit slower than normal because if she's too fast... Hello, my name is Tessa. I am a South African English voice. The problem there is that she is often rushing and people don't take in the information. So I like to pull it down and make it a little slower. Now of course on a Mac you don't need to save anything. When you're ready just uh, close the window. Come on over to your notes app. Now I like to use uh, the notes app within the Mac itself because it's quick and easy and the nice thing about the notes app is that <clears throat> I can use it on all of my different devices. So you can see that I've got some notes here uh, that we've been talking about and all I need to do is come across and I can click on some text and highlight that text to then have it spoken. Now there's quite a few different things in here so for example I could uh, triple click here we go. Now, on a Mac, you can right-click. If you're a person who hasn't enabled their right-click on the Mac, do go ahead and do so. Um, it just makes your life so much easier. So you can right-click, come along, and then scroll down your menu and come to speech. First of all, you can click on Start Speaking. With some adjustments, your text-to-speech can sound close to natural speech. You'll do this. Now, of course, you can hit the stop speaking if you want to as well. <coughs> Be aware that if you're using punctuation, it really does help with what you're doing with your text. 
Here's a few pro tips for working with your text. Firstly, speak what you've written yourself and add a comma to your text when you take a breath. Adding commas not only breaks up your sentences, but also tells the computer where to add inflections in the voice. Questions should inflect upwards, and the end of a sentence should inflect down. You can use dashes and full stops to add beats to your sentences. Sometimes you may have to cut the audio within your editing app to add breaks. Be careful with capitalization. Remember to place full stops between capital letters for acronyms such as CSIRO. Read the text as it is spoken. Note any points where you may need to change punctuation and apply those changes once you've listened to the speech. Now, if you're so happy with that, you can right click, scroll down to the bottom of the list, come down to services and move over to add to music as spoken track. What this essentially means is that this will then send this off to iTunes or your music app, depending on what version of the Mac you've got, and it will be available to you as an audio file. So once you give it a click, you'll notice that you may see a cog appear in the top of the screen and also a request to choose the voice. Now, of course, you can use any voice you like, but it's always best to use the one that you've chosen with your system. Um, so, for example, uh, I know that I'm using Tessa, so I can come down and click on Tessa, give the file a name, text test, for example, click continue, and away we go. Now that file is now processing. There we go, short and sharp, nice and easily done. What should also happen is now the music app opens up. Here we go, hello the music app. Yes, you can see I love the Pet Shop Boys. Now within the music app, you can see that the file has appeared under text test. I can simply play it. With some adjustments, your text to speech can sound close to natural speech. You'll do with some adjustments, your text to speech. So you can see that uh, you can play that file and once it's in the music app, you can then uh, simply do anything you like with it. Now that you're inside your video editing software, it's time to add your test or your little voice track. So here I am here, I have voiceover test. I'm just dragging it down onto the timeline here on Final Cut Pro. I've already uh, added a gray uh, background as, as a solid and a couple of text uh, boxes as well there's some placeholders uh, using the text from my notes app I find that's the easiest way to do it instead of retyping everything just copying and pasting over from your text app um, now I've already set some timing on these but you can see down the bottom here with the waveforms that there's a clear break what I want to do is uh, I want to make sure that my phrasing is actually okay um, not archer phrasing haha but phrasing now uh, what we want to do here is actually give it a play and as it plays through, uh, we can see the text coming through there. And I know that I want the text to fade off and sort of uh, match up with the graphics here. So I see that's where I've actually spaced it. So what I want to do is come back down here to my audio line. I'm going to come in and uh, choose the blade tool and just blade that off. Uh, and then come over and slide that to the right so that lines up nicely with the text coming in. So you should have that effect of uh, the text coming in as we're actually uh, having the text animate. What I then do is slide over to the far right corner and just make sure everything lines up so it's nice and uh, even essentially with the uh, end of everything, as long as it works for you. Um, essentially, you've got your text there ready to go. And then all you really need to do then is uh, just come along and actually test it. With some adjustments, your text-to-speech can sound close to natural speech. You'll do this with some settings adjustments and the use of punctuation in your text document. And that's a really important point to remember as well, that um, you've been playing with your text and this is where you'll come into things where you suddenly think, oh, maybe things don't sound quite right. So do go back and re-recall the text if you like, because remember, once you've got your timeline set up within your video editing app with your graphics and everything in there, you can re uh, drop your text in, cut it up if you need to, and adjust your video accordingly.